What is up, druids and mages of Azeroth? My name is Rumi the Doggo Druid, and in this video, I want to talk about how to AoE farm as a mage to max level in about 15 to 20 hours, depending on how fast you are and the competition that you're dealing with. I am about to hit 25 on this mage. Just thought I would share the spots that I used. Now, why am I leveling up a mage? I do believe that Druid or really any class that can self heal and tank a little bit is great at farming for gold. But if you are farming stuff that has groups, then mage is the king. And I think that will be the fastest class once the second level cap is unlocked. So what I'm doing here is I'm flying into uh, Loch Modan and I'm going to run north and hit up the final uh, AOE leveling spot. But while I'm doing it, I want to discuss some of the things that you need in order to make this happen and some of the things that you can do along the way to make this uh, profitable, even though, you know, we're not going to be farming the really good spots until we get to level 25. First and foremost, you got to have three runes. The regeneration rune is the crux of everything, being able to self heal while you are AOEing down all of these groups of mobs. Before the regeneration rune, you had to rely on frost novas and blizzards and cone of cold slows in order to AOE farm. And while those are very effective methods of leveling up, this is way faster. Living Flame is the slowest part of this whole thing. This is a one minute cooldown. And uh, this is a spell fire damaging ability, which means it counts as arcane, which means your healing is impacted. And then the last ability is Living Bomb. This is a super fast, well, instant cast damage dealing ability that uh, after a couple of seconds of burning, it will explode, wreck everybody around him on top of the living flame. And uh, finally, the arcane explosion, which you get, I'm not even sure at what level you get it. That's kind of unlocks the whole thing is once you get arcane explosion this thing this whole thing kind of just ramps up you also you know just need to know where to go especially if there's a little bit of competition now real quick i'm going to show off this little cool ability right here as you come through the tunnel you're going to hit uh, slow fall and you're just going to jump off this right side i love this so much you know a lot of other classes that do the aoe farming have to you know run all the way around i just jump off the <laughs> just jump off the edge and float down. Ooh, they all look so good. I can't wait to eat them all up. I'll be right with you. Now, one of the cool new mechanics of classic Season of Discovery are these scrolls, and some of them are really cool, like this ability to revive a dead player, a mage specific. This is really cool, the ability to do this. There's some arcane crit and arcane hit scrolls, which are really nice, but these will turn into, you have like scroll of spirit, one and two, scroll of intelligence, one and two, strength, agility, and you know some protection you have all kinds of scrolls that you get constantly you need these uh, comprehension charms in order to you know go through these man why does this keep graying out on me it's kind of weird anyway you maintain a pile of these at all times and you just open these up whenever you can you know between pulls while you're waiting because you know living flame is on that one minute cooldown so you will have some downtime in between pulls scroll of agility scroll of strength scroll of intelligence sells for a lot on the auction house and you have arcane and intellect so you can just you know this is actually more powerful than the scroll of intellect but uh, other other classes that don't have readily access to arcane intellect especially since mages aren't really brought to the raid that often that's going to be selling as well the scrolls of protection and the scrolls of spirit i keep on me and i just use them while i'm farming to kind of speed things up whenever you first come into an area and you're dealing with mobs that are a level or two higher than you you're going to want to have as much mana regen as possible and as you build up the mana see i'm facing off against these level 20s for the last little bit you're not going to need as much spirit or mana regen or mana to blow these guys up let's get through this real fast and then you can get to the leveling grind yourself from level 10 to level 13 you're going to work want to work on uh, murloc lurkers they're just along this coastline right here they spawn pretty quickly these mobs are level 9 and level 10 like i said you can get up to about level 13 on them you're going to want to get a ride over to aberdeen one way or another get a summon from a warlock maybe take the boat just get over to aberdeen however you can just south of aberdeen there are blackwood wind talkers and pathfinders these are level 13 to 14 mobs they are quest mobs and they spawn super 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 fast 
You can get from level 12 to about level 16 on these bad boys. And there is enough in the camps in this area right here that even if there's other people questing in the area, you should be able to pull and pull and pull and pull and pull. And the best part about this is if you just go south into Ashenvale every uh, every now and then, maybe your guild will tell you when the Ashenvale PVP event is about to happen. Just zone in, hang out on the in the, in the edge there, get the uh, Ashenvale Silverwing Sentinel rep or what have you, and then just pop back over. From about level 14 to 20, I like to face off against the uh, River Paw Bandits and the Brutes just south of Sentinel Hill. There's a couple of camps above the road and some camps south of the road. These are farmed quite a bit. I think these are also quest mobs. There are four to six camps that are clustered together. There is a caster in some of the camps and they are really hard to farm at the lower level so be very mindful of those camps but it's proximity to sentinel hill makes this super convenient like i said these are uh, level 15 to 16 mobs you can farm these all the way up to level 20. if these are too busy if those camps are too busy then you can head over here from around level 16 to around level 21 face off against the crabs the shore crawlers specifically shore crawlers are from level 17 to 18 and uh, there are crabs further north on the coast that are lower level that, you know, if you're dealing with a lot of competition at the, uh, you know, 13 to 14 to 15 range uh, against those knolls, then, you know, just go north. It's just, you know, it's a little bit less convenient than just running straight south uh, or west or what have you. And while you're farming this, you can definitely get in with some dead mines groups. Uh, get that uh, get that note from Van Cleef. This should get you all the way to around level 21, either the knolls or these crawlers. Get to level 21 and then head to wetlands and face off against these camps right here. These are the moss hide mongrels and these are also, I believe, a quest mob. They respawn super 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 fast let's go ahead and buff up and get into it i'm gonna show you how fast these guys spawn one thing i want to mention as far as the pulling rotation here is whenever you're just getting into a level range of these uh these mobs then you want to end the pull with living flame but once you get to the higher end of facing off against these mobs you can see these are like the like green level then you can start the pull with living flame to get this bad boy on cooldown this being on a one minute cooldown is the biggest problem that you're going to deal with so uh I like to try and target the furthest one, light it up, and then just do mouse over macros for living flame. I'm sorry, for a uh, living bomb, excuse me. Pull them all the way out here and then just let them walk on the fire. Throw in an arcane explosion or two to speed things up a little bit and watch how fast these things respawn. See, there's one, there's another one. Yeah, see, I don't think I'm gonna, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get to that chest <laughs> because of how fast they spawn. And uh, unfortunately, uh, can I get this one right here? Yeah, same deal. I'm gonna have to wait a second or two for the living flame cooldown to finish. And then uh, we'll continue doing this until I hit uh, level 25. Now, again, these pulls, depending on your competition, uh, you can get about a level an hour or maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more, depending on how good you are, depending on how often you die. There are graveyard runs that are going to slow you down, of course. And, you know, this one in particular is in a PvP zone, though being in the southern end, you're not really going to see too much PvP from here. And by the way, if you're a Horde player, I do apologize. I don't really have much for you. It just is what it is. I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab this one that's pathing up here. Boom. We're going to light you up. We're going to grab you and we're going to grab you pull you guys back. Hopefully this one doesn't path away. Uh, hit him with an arcane explosion, arcane explosion, arcane explosion. Kaboom, 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 kaboom. There we go. One, two. Look how fast that respawned. Ugh, only two though. Yeah, we'll get this guy, this third one that's pathing off to the side. We'll get him on the way back through. But that's it, guys. That's AoE farming as a mage. Uh, gets a level 25 super, super, super fast. Get some AoE farming for great loot, great rewards. Show off to your guildies and prepare for phase two. As always, guys, be good or be good at it. I'll see you next time.